First, I want to say that this video was recorded back in the fall of 2018, but for some reason, I only remembered it now. Welcome everyone to the channel. Every few months, I visit the flea market and never return without major purchases. This time, I decided to bring a camera to film a story about the flea market, but I messed up and forgot to bring the memory card. However, I still made a major purchase. The seller was a respectable guy who didn't want to negotiate, so I had to hand over a whole thousand rubles for this set. I won't drag it out, so let's jump straight into the full retro review. In front of us is a combined power supply set, or KEC. It consists of three parts. A transformer unit with the abbreviation INP, which stands for Unregulated Power Source, and two similar units with the abbreviation IPR which stands for Regulated Power Source. In a nutshell, it's a powerful, regulated power source for educational institutions. Technical specifications. Quite impressive. The power source can provide either direct or alternating voltage at the output. Up to 40 to 50 volts at a current of up to 6 to 10 amperes, which, by the way, is about half a kilowatt. It's important to note that this power source has a very high efficiency and it is by no means a switching power supply. I'll say more. There are almost no semiconductors in the regulating units except for the diode rectifier, but let's take it step by step. Let's examine each unit in turn, then disassemble each one, and let's start with the transformer unit. On the front panel, we see three switches that allow you to Select the voltage that will go to the regulating units. In this case, the upper position of the switch will allow you to get a voltage up to 36 volts. The lower position, up to 42 volts. Since the unit is not stabilized, these values can fluctuate depending on the voltage in the network. On the same panel, we see a protection circuit breaker. Turning it off stops the power supply to the regulating units, and there's also a main switch with an indicator light. Inside this unit, we see a bunch of wires, terminal blocks, and the heart of the entire construction. The power transformer. This is a very cool iron transformer OSU-04. Just one transformer weighs more than 5 kilograms. This is a single-phase network transformer and it has two secondary windings at 36 and 5 volts. The transformer has impressive dimensions and high reliability. Such robust equipment will never let you down. Note that there is grounding here and it is very well arranged. The wire is of decent gauge. After all, this is a device for educational institutions and safety. Above all. The wiring is also done very skillfully. Everything is neat. You can feel the old school craftsmanship. The places where the wires touch the metal are additionally insulated. The protective circuit breaker on the transformer block is 10 amps. This block essentially provides us with an alternating voltage up to 42 volts with galvanic isolation from the network and switching. The cases of all three parts are, of course, metal, and the metal is quite thick. The chassis is sturdy, unlike modern devices that bend and break even from loud talking. We close this block and move on to the second one. This is essentially a voltage regulator, not a stabilizer, but specifically a regulator. On the front panel, a large analog voltmeter and ammeter catch the eye along with a power switch, with an indicator, output terminals, a connector for connecting a second regulator from the same set, and a large switch, which we will discuss a bit later. Oh, and right in the center, we have a huge dial. With it, you can smoothly adjust the output voltage. On the back panel, there is a 6 amp circuit breaker. We open the block for inspection and maintenance. And right away, we see something resembling a transformer. Essentially, folks, the entire setup is a huge variac. The principle of voltage regulation is exactly like that of a variac. The alternating voltage from the transformer block goes to the regulation block. Then it goes to the regulation system, 
which is a single winding transformer with a center tap. The center tap is a slider and by rotating it, the voltage is regulated. The current is collected using a roller. Then the voltage goes to the rectification unit. The rectifier seems to consist of four powerful diodes. Apparently, these are power diodes of the type D104-20 or something from this series. In any case, the diodes can easily handle currents of about 20A. They are mounted on heat sinks, and the heat sink itself is attached to the metal casing. The wiring and connections are done at the same level as in the case of the first unit. Everything is labeled neatly and reliably. By the way, I forgot to mention that inside each unit, in addition to the circuit breakers, there are also fuses. If you pay attention to the details, you can notice that almost all the switches are additionally insulated from the casing with paper washers, which is quite pleasing. I would gladly use such a device. The second regulator unit is exactly the same as the first one. I disassembled it off camera, cleaned it, and reassembled it. As mentioned earlier, the first regulator is connected to the transformer unit, and the second one is connected to it. Moreover, the voltage coming from the first regulator to the second one through a special connector is variable. Power losses are almost zero. The switch we talked about earlier is the output voltage selector. The left position cuts off the DC output and supplies AC to the corresponding terminals and to the connector where the second regulator is connected. That is, you can't set a constant voltage on both regulators simultaneously without an upgrade. The toggle switch on the main regulator must always be in the left position for the second regulator to work. The complex has one interesting feature. The first regulator is always the leading one. With its help, you can change the voltage on the second one, which allows you to very smoothly set any voltage at the output. Even without this, the adjustment is very smooth with an accuracy of up to 100 MV. On both adjustment blocks, you might have noticed connectors labeled variable voltage. By moving the slider on these connectors, you can get a variable voltage from 0 to 50 volts. So you could say the power supply is 2 in 1. Low voltage AC and with the ability to adjust it. A very useful feature. On the indicators, we see a dual scale. The upper one shows the value for direct current, the lower one for alternating current. In the adjustment blocks, there aren't even any smoothing capacitors. Yes, the ripples here are significant, the power isn't clean, but in theory, as I mentioned earlier, this is analogous to a variac. Only the output voltage is direct, low voltage, and isolated. Safe and convenient. You can conduct practically any experiments in educational institutions. That's exactly what our power source is intended for. And now let's test our power supply in action. First, let's check the range of output voltages and the smoothness of adjustment. The video is not sped up. The same experiment, but now with alternating voltage. Well, now let's load this beast with my favorite lamps from a movie projector. Amps, you say? Yes, easily, it can even give 20. Of course, there are voltage drops, but this isn't a stabilizer. When trying to draw more than 22 amps, the protection circuit on the adjustment block was triggered. The setup hardly heats up, and there's nothing to heat up except the diodes. 
but even those at maximum currents of 10 to 15 amps feel great. It is not possible to measure the output voltage ripple in such a system. It's pointless. They will be large. Even a hedgehog would understand, since there's not even a capacitor here. What can I say in conclusion? Personally, I am very satisfied. The device is built to last. For many years, this setup was gathering dust on the shelf. Now, after some maintenance, it will find its place on my workbench. It will please the eyes and warm the soul. Some might think it's old junk or trash. But I disagree with them, if only because modern things can be bought at any moment, but something like this will never be produced again. Rate this video, share it with friends, and leave your feedback. I still have plenty of old equipment and would be happy to review them if, of course, you enjoy videos of this format. And with that, I have. Only to say goodbye. As always, this was Kazian K with you. And until we meet again, goodbye.